right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up today. We're in the book of Colossians. We're wrapping up our devotional series, General Electric Power Company. But don't tune out just yet. The book of Colossians, probably one of my favorite books of the Bible. Because in it, we find out that not only are we in Christ Jesus, like Paul tells us in Ephesians again and again and again, a great study is to read through Ephesians and, and circle every time it says we're in Christ and, and study that. That's a wonderful uh, truth from God. But Colossians tells us not only are we in Christ Jesus, but Jesus is in us. We're going to read in Colossians, going to say Christ in you is the hope of glory. It's pretty cool stuff. And here in Colossians, we're going to see that. We're going to pick it up today. Colossians chapter 1. We're going to begin in verse 9 and make it through verse 14. And this section is about how Jesus, well, he is the greatest. You know, he is before all things. He is the, the king of all things. You can trust him in all things. You can rely on him for all things. And we pick it up, Colossians 1, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Paul says, we are praying for you guys. We hear of your great faith in the Lord. We're praying for you. We don't cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Man, we want you to be filled with the knowledge of what God is doing. We need to pray for that again today, you know. Um, it's been said that here in, the, here in the West, we tell God what to do in prayer. But in the East, in places that are experiencing revival like China, they go to God and they say, God, what, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You know, it's been said prayer is not for us to get our will done in heaven, but to see heaven, to see God's will done on earth. And there's truth to that. And Paul here says, similarly, I pray that, that, and I ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, that you might walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Paul says, man, I want you to know God's will, and then I want you to do it. I want you to increase Increase in the knowledge of God. I, I want to see you be fruitful in every good work. You know, when we're doing the knowledge of God, not only are we doing stuff, not only are we busy, but we're busy about the Father's business. What you're going to discover is there will be fruit from it. The Lord will move and he'll bless it. And that's what he says here. Verse 11, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Verse 13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Do you know that God, through Jesus on the cross, has delivered you from the power of darkness? Yes. And he's conveyed us, it says, into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. Isn't that awesome? You know, you once were children of darkness. I once was a child of darkness. Now I'm a child of light. You know, we're not to walk in darkness. If you stumble in sin, you know, if you're struggling with drugs or alcohol or some sexual sin, fornication, pornography, you know, you're struggling with cheating or stealing, right? You know, you're, 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 you're stepping in the sin. You're struggling with it. Bring it into the light. Don't walk in the darkness anymore. Satan is in the dark. He's there to beat you up, to beat you down, to kill, steal, and destroy. But, but bring it into the light. Go to a brother or a sister in Christ, you know, and say, yeah, I'm really struggling with this. Would you pray for me? Would you hold me accountable? Would you ask me how I'm doing in this area? I need that. And if somebody comes to you with it, Hold them accountable lovingly. Say, oh, yes, I will. I'm going to be praying for you about that. And, uh, you know, well, next time I see you, I'll ask you, how you doing in that area? And pray for them. And do it with an attitude of grace. You know, they're not asking you to fix them. They're asking you to pray for them, to just be a human representation of a brother or sister in Christ, of Jesus, to help them bring it into the light. And watch, watch what the Lord will do, right? 
Jesus is before all things. He's the one who brought us out of darkness. He's the one who conveyed us into his family. He's the one that's going to keep changing us. And I pray you would believe that today for the glory of God. And Father, I pray, bless your people. Fill them with your spirit. And Lord, may you, Lord, help them to walk in the light even today and to stay in that light until you return. In Jesus' name, amen.